Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're giving you guys a review of Senjutsu by Iron Maiden. So we've listened to this album constantly throughout the entire week and I will say this, it's a good album and I enjoyed it. But I didn't find it to be an exceptional album. You know what, that's something I was really struggling with throughout the week trying to figure out. I wasn't sure why I wasn't loving this album. So I guess I'm just going to talk about some general notes I made throughout the week just to kind of get some stuff out there. And one big thing about this album that I really, really like is that it is not repetitive at all in the slightest. That is one of our biggest criticisms on this channel for albums that sometimes they get really repetitive and samey, but yep. every single song in this album is unique and has its own identity. And even more so, a lot of them are pretty catchy. They kind of get into your head, whether good or bad. I mean, it's up to the listener in that point. But I think this album does a really good job with that. And they did a really good job with that in the Book of Souls as well. And that's one thing I kind of found interesting, that the overall band sound from this album compared to the Book of Souls is pretty similar, but the composition was very different. Like, the songs on this record sound nothing like the songs on the last record. So I find that really interesting that they were able to keep the band sound they had, but still write music that just sounds, it's brand new, right? It's understandable though, that's a good thing. Exactly, that's one of the strengths of this album. What were you thinking of Bruce's voice on this record? Because I, I was kind of back and forth on it. I'm glad you brought that up, because that was going to be one of my main points of, of topic here. Um, I loved it, for a while, I'll just say that, I think he sounds great on this album. Um, but there was a lot of criticism, um, even for me at the beginning of the week, like, it doesn't sound like Bruce normally sounds, it doesn't sound like that classic Bruce that we all know and love, he's not hitting the same notes he used to hit. All these things kind of sound like negative things, but then I started realizing, why is it that not okay? That's okay, he doesn't have to keep doing the same things he's always done. He still sounds great, he's getting old, we have to understand that. He, you can hear the, the age in his voice. Okay, you can hear it, especially in the first two tracks, I hear it a lot. Um, a good example of something like that, if you don't know what I'm talking about, listen to the Johnny Cash Hurt song. Like that to me is like a, a good example of a man with just age in his voice singing a song. Bruce has not quite as much as Johnny Cash, but it's there, you can hear it. There's, he's, he's an older man, like what do you expect him to sound like he's 20, 23 still? Like that's not gonna work. He still sounds phenomenal though. He's got runs, he's got, um, just some great harmonies, just, he does hit some pretty good notes, not as high as he used to, but not as high as we know, but it's not an issue. It's not an issue. It still sounds good. It's not like he's like hacking up lungs or freaking, you know, botching things or his pitches all over. It's none of that. And he still sounds fucking awesome. And that is really impressive to consider that he's as old as he is and still able to perform really well. Yeah. My, my favorite aspect of his performance on this album were just the harmonies that was that were sprinkled in throughout all the tracks. I, every time there was a really nice harmony, I thought, oh, wow, that was really nice. Yeah. That sounded really good. Um, one thing to touch on that we talked about last week was the parchment and hell on earth. Now, we said, we both agreed last week that the parchment should have totally been the last track on the album. And throughout the week, I still agree with that. I still think that uh, that song is a really, really good album closer. And Hell on Earth, while a good song, is just not as effective as a closer as, as the parchment is. Especially because the parchment has a really kind of slow, big and powerful feel to it until the end when it gets a lot crazier. And I feel like that's a really good kind of epic way to end an album. They just didn't do that. Yeah. Um, okay, so my feelings on this album throughout the week varied a bit. Uh, I, like I said last week, I'm not the biggest Iron Maiden fan, okay? I do love the band. I mean, I've always loved their Timeless. But I'm not the biggest fan. So I listened to this album going, okay, is this really gonna do it for me in the week, throughout the week? And I gotta say, I think it did. I think it definitely um, rubbed me the right way. Cause you got songs like The Parchment, um, Lost in the Lost World, uh, amazing tracks. I, I fell in love with these tracks, I love these tracks. And then you got songs like Writing It on the Wall, which I was like very impartial um, before, um, Death of the, of the Celts, um, and Hell on Earth. Um, all grew on me exponentially. I love these songs. Hell on Earth is a fucking amazing song. And I changed my mind. I think it's a great album closer. I 
don't know what I was thinking, it's one of my lowest rated tracks on my first impressions notes. That song is phenomenal. The Writing on the Wall, that song, the first single, has a weird intro. It sounds very different. It sounds like, what the hell are they going with it? What's this? Just let that song take you for a ride. It is epic. It is amazing. The solo section in that song is fire. That's another thing. I think we're spoiled with bands like Art Spire, for example. Just, I'm, I was thinking of like the most technical band that can come to mind. Just pure crazy technicality, immense skill across the board. And we start to lose sight of fundamentals, like the real fundamentals of what make metal metal. This album, this band, Iron Maiden, knows fundamentals. This is where it's at. If you know how to appreciate this kind of metal, then I think you're on the right track. Like the solos on this, they're not blazingly fast, but there's finesse, there's style, there's personality. There's all these things that a solo really needs in order to be good. It's not just about the notes. So this album has a lot of that stuff, not just with guitars, but even the vocals, the drums, the bass, it's all there. And it's all just extremely well put together, extremely well orchestrated. The only song that I had trouble with was track number seven, Darkest Hour. It's kind of like the slow song in the album, but it did grow on me. And even up until today, listening to it, I started going, you know what? This is actually a really great track too. That goes a long way that I think the worst song of the album is still a great track. It actually gives me Living Bad Dreams vibes by really? Judas Priest. Although vocally Living Bad Dreams is on another level, but then you're going back um, to however many years, whatever. Um, but just the vibes there were very similar. Uh, title track and Stratego were, well, Stratego was your, let's talk about Stratego, because that was your, t your top track it on was, First Impressions. It okay. was. So, um, it's a fun song and I enjoy it, but I feel like it didn't grip me as much as it did in the First Impressions, even though I still like it, and it, I feel like it's a lot better as a quote-unquote classic sounding song than Speed of Light was on the Book of Souls. Because on that album, that was obviously the classic kind of song. Mm. I feel like this album, or this Stratego, this song, is a lot more interesting and doesn't feel like they're forcing anything. Speed of Light kind of felt like they're trying to really force their old sound into a maiden that just isn't that anymore. But this feels like an interesting new kind of thing from it, and I liked that. But this, I didn't really love this song as much as I did. As for my favorite songs, the Writing on the Wall is a great track, and I think it's a perfect example of the fact that Iron Maiden can evolve and still sound like Iron Maiden, and I think mm. that's wonderful. Um, I really liked The Parchment. That was another one of my favorites. Great song. Um, Death of the Celts was pretty good. What, one thing I was kind of finding with this album is that a lot of the songs, to me, were good, but didn't feel really, really great, but they were still good and enjoyable, and I liked them. And I was kind of struggling with that throughout the entire week, and I was wondering why I wasn't really falling in love with it, because I enjoyed it when I listened to it. And I checked out the Book of Souls again, just as a reference point. I know I've mentioned that album a little bit much here, but I just wanted a bit of a reference, and perhaps this album lacks a little bit of the bite that the last record did. Because the last record was... Similar to a degree of it's the same kind of overall band sound, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of long songs and this and that, but I felt like you can kind of see little tiny elements of the, the kind of classic Iron Maiden in there while still sounding like a brand new thing. Mm -hmm. However, with this album, it kind of doubles down on being new, and they, they kind of step a little bit more away from the classic bite. So you can really see that both ways. You can see that as they're really, really jumping into something new, or you can see that as, you know, they're kind of losing a little bit of character with it. So yeah. I feel like you can really go either way with that. But for myself, I just wasn't really like totally head over heels with a lot of these songs, but I was still enjoying them a lot. I will say, though, some of these songs and specifically two could have been a bit shorter. And those were the title track and Darkest Hour. I think Darkest Hour is a really strong ballad. It just didn't need to be as long as it was. Yeah, it's probably because of that the intros and outros are kind of they kind of drag a bit but for me I kind of forgot about that listening to the 
album throughout the week. The intros and outros, stuff like that in music tends to bother me, but I guess when the payoff is good enough, it's forgivable for me. And in this case, I feel like it was. But let's rate it. What do you give uh, Senjutsu? Well, Senjutsu, I think, is a good album, and I enjoyed it. And you know what? I think this is a really good step for Iron Maiden going forward. And honestly, it's really hard to rate, because I feel like you've sold a little bit of aspects of it to me a little bit here throughout our review. So, um, but it does not reach Totec status for me. It just did not feel like it was exceptional. So I guess for this album, I'll have to give it a 7. Kind of going a little bit past my own feelings here because you really have to consider that this band has really evolving with this record and doing something they've never done before with a lot of these tracks. Okay, so before I rate it, um, just want to say a couple, a couple small things. There was one thing on this album that I really didn't like, and that was in Lost in a Lost World, that echo thing that happens at the end of the phrases. <laughs> uh, it gets old very fast. I feel like that could have been a little bit more tastefully implemented. Like, I don't hate the fact that there's an echo, but the fact that it's like kind of at the end of every phrase, it just felt almost very amateurish to put that there. But other than that, uh, throughout the week listening to it, I kept going, oh damn, what's this song? Oh damn, what's this song? And like, it was a different song every time. So I'm like, just falling in love with all these songs. I think this is an exceptionally well-produced album. It gets a toe tag for me. I'm sad that it's not getting two toe tags. I thought it would. But I understand your, your concerns and your gripes with it. But I just think that Iron Maiden just knows exactly how to make pretty much perfect music um, fundamentally. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it, it all boils down to that. They're just nailing it exactly where it needs to be nailed. They're not trying to go overboard. They're not trying to impress anybody else. They're making Iron Maiden music for Iron Maiden fans. And I think they nailed it on this one. Well, unfortunately, they didn't nail it enough to get two toe tags, but still a seven for myself and a toe tag from Vile Self. Those are still pretty solid scores. So anyway, guys, that's all we got for you today. Remember to like the video if you liked it. And tell us in the comments below, what do you think of this album after a week? It's been out for that long. Remember to like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm TV Fish. And I'm Wild Self. We'll see you guys later.